Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Zach, or you probably know me as Tubar, formerly known as Optic Tubar, and I'm back after a long, long break, and I have some explaining to do, but I'm going to save it for a different video, because I want to jump right into some more tutorials for those of you who are still interested. Uh, I'm not really expecting this video to get a ton of views necessarily, and I don't know how many of you guys are still out there and interested in this, but without further ado, I'm going to show you guys how to do an advanced sync tutorial using Twixter. And uh, I'm not sure if I've ever seen anyone else do this technique, but this is the way that I do it, and I think it works really well. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let me show you what we're going to be doing. So really the advanced part here comes from being able to use Twixter and have really good control over like not having the stuttering frames and you can sort of make really good slow motion without um, with the control of a regular sync. And if you don't know how to do a basic sync, uh, I'm gonna leave a tutorial uh, link in the description for another tutorial that I did for basic syncs. But this is gonna be advanced using Twixter. So first thing I'm gonna do is make a new composition, main comp two and just press OK. So if you guys want to follow along with the same files that I'm using, you can download them in the description. So I'm assuming you guys already know the basics of editing. So of course you probably want to pre-composition your clip, but I already did that. So I'm going to just bring out the pre-comp right now. And I'm going to bring out the song that we're going to be using. It's a nice chromatic song. I'm going to open the waveforms by pressing LL. And let me navigate to the drop. All right, so there it is, and go ahead and make sure to turn off the audio for the clip as well. So also, let me go ahead and add some markers to this song, and if you don't know how to do that, again, you should check out the basic sync tutorial in the description. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and add Twixter to this clip. In one sec, let me just collapse this huge waveform. Wow, it's huge. All right, so go ahead and search up Twixter or Twixter Pro. So once you've applied Twixter to your clip, the first thing you want to do is change the frame rate to match your clip, which in this case is 59.94 frames per second. And this is where the technique actually comes in. We're not going to be using speed, we're going to be using frame number. And this gives us the same sort of technique of syncing as time remapping, for those of you who are used to using that. But before we can proceed, we have to also change the way that the time is being displayed, and I'll show you why in a second. But just hold on control and click on the time so it shows us frames instead of seconds. And then we want to select our clip and press I to jump to the very first frame. And you want to make sure it's the actual first frame where it has this little black thing. Because if you're like trimmed down and you press I, this won't actually be the first frame. And also, you want to make sure it's the first frame of your actual clip too, because if for example you had like the comp start here, it would also mess it up. So you just want to not trim um, the pre-comp, basically is all I'm saying. So then once you've done that, you want to actually add a keyframe at frame number zero on the very first frame. So make sure on the first frame and then hit keyframe. And then press U to reveal the keyframes. And here's where a little bit of a trick comes in. You want to navigate back to your project panel. So you may have to slide over here and click on your clip and it will show you exactly how many frames long this clip is. And that'll tell us exactly how much we have to keyframe. So once you figure that out, you want to press select the clip and press O on your keyboard to jump to the last clip or the last frame, sorry. And because we keyframed at zero and After Effects starts at one instead of zero, we actually have to take this number and subtract one. So at the very last frame, we want to keyframe for this clip at 742 and hit apply. So it may take a little while to load up, but this red screen is actually normal. And then once we've done that, we can go through and we've actually loaded up the clip with Twixter frames. And to make sure you've done this correctly, you want to look at the frame number when you scrub through. And if it says 0, .00 on every single frame, then you're good. But if, for example, it says like, you know, 0 0.03 or 0 0.65, then that means you've messed up the first keyframes a little bit and you want to go back and make sure they're right. So even though right now we've loaded it all up in Twixter, there's no warping because Twixter is not actually doing anything. So then just like normal, we want to go through and add keyframes on every kill. I'm actually going to skip the first two kills just because they're kind of like later. So uh, use page up and down 
and add your keyframes. I'm going to fast forward through this part because you guys are probably familiar with this. So then what I like to do is bring out my gunshots. So I'm going to go get the intervention clip that, again, I've provided in the description if you want it. And uh, let's see, where do we want the first shot to be? Let's listen to this. So yeah, first marker is first kill. And here's another tip, if you hold down control while you scrub, you can get like a very controlled um, preview of the audio so you can like scrub over that part to make sure that's the part that you want. So I'm hit J to snap these up and duplicate, line them up. I'm pretty sure that's what we want to sync to be. Let's go ahead and listen. <laughs> no, that's way too fast actually um, because I added the down beats as well. We have to do every other marker just like that. All right, sounds good. So now we just have to line up our keyframes just like normal. And we haven't actually got to anything advanced yet, but bear with me. You get a lot more control, I promise. So there's the first shot. Make sure to select all the keyframes behind it so you don't mess with that yet. The second shot's actually lined up perfectly already. Um, then do the third. So here's where a little bit of the actual clip has to come in. So this may be different for every clip. But since there's like a lot of time in between this shot and the next shot, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of Twixter syncing. So basically when the numbers come up here, this is probably a good spot. I'm just going to add a keyframe here and go maybe, you know, five to 10 frames forward. Maybe that's a little too much. Actually, let me just go there, add a keyframe. So you have these two keyframes and we're going to have slow motion in between those two keyframes in a second. And then we're going to do the same thing right before the kill. Maybe right here. So add a keyframe there. Go like five frames forward or so. And add another one. So then we can just take all this big gap in between and just close that up until that the shot lines up where we want it to be. And then we can add the space or sorry, spread out these keyframes a little bit to add slow motion. And actually there's this little part in the song that's like kind of like energetic, so it might be a good place to add fast motion. So let me listen to that really quick, right there. So that's probably where I want to do the fast motion. So let's see. Yeah, something like that'll work. Let's see how this turns out. So here's something I like to do to add a little bit of um, energy to the sync is on the down beats, add another keyframe and set that keyframe to easy ease by right click keyframe assistant easy ease. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this downbeat keyframe, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like, but you can also always go into the graph editor and you can see it's created this like stutter sync kind of where it has like some slow motion in between the shots and you can make that more or less or you can do something even more creative with it. Something that I like to do a lot is to sync up other actions of the gun with the music like maybe the bolt action or you know um, anything else maybe like zooming in really fast or something you know just be creative with that. So from here let's go ahead and preview. I'm going to set my workspace and whoops beat ram preview so you can see there's definitely some warping from twixter but it's not too noticeable so you see i kind of messed up the timing on that little like part here at the end so let's try to fix that a little bit Here, let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's move this forward a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's a little bit better. 
Um, of course, you'd want to spend more time if this was your actual project, but uh, it's just a tutorial. So that's pretty much it, but I just want to emphasize the fact that you can add like keyframes here. For example, if I you know, wanted to make this slow motion really easily, just make a keyframe there, make one there, and then watch out since they're easy ease, you may have to pr hold down control and click on them to bring them back to regular keyframes. And then, you know, you can like separate these and then there'll be nice twister slow motion. Of course, since there's a lot of motion and blood on the screen and all that, it's kind of warpy. But of course, adding real smart motion blur, RSMB, may not even have that installed. Don't think I have it installed, but anyways, real smart motion blur is a great tool for hiding twister warping. And that's basically it. I think this is the easiest way to sync with Twixter, and it gives you way more control than doing it with um, time remapping because uh, time remapping doesn't uh, doesn't make new frames like Twixter does, so it doesn't have that super smooth slow motion. So you can't do things like add this, you know, stutter here at the at the uh, in between shots. And you can even like go in, like I said, and make this even more so. Let's see what that looks like. It may not even look good because too much slow motion looks weird, but. Uh, Let's go ahead and see what that looks like just for fun. Now, of course, on this graph editor, um, time is moving at an upward angle like this. So this is like fast motion, as you can see. And then if it's like flat, then that means it's slow motion or no motion at all. So right here is going to be like very, very little motion, if any. So if I scrub through that, you can see like there's not even any motion. So that may be way too much, and it probably will be, but let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So yeah, you can see, uh, you get the idea, you know, um, there's so much you can do with this technique that I really can't show it to you all. I just want to show you guys how to set it up and what very easy yet effective way to do it to do a cool sync is so for those of you who have made it this far into the video i appreciate you guys watching even though i haven't been around for the past you know year or so or more um go ahead and leave a like if you don't mind because that will show me like how many guys really care about this how many guys watched it through and uh like i said i will be doing these either way even if you guys aren't watching these and getting thousands of views like when I was an optic but this is just for fun and I want to help you guys out for those of you who are still interested so thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video peace